Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use block design pattern in your Flutter application. Block stands for business logic component. It is a design pattern that helps to separate presentation layer from business logic. While at the same time, Block uses provider as its state manager. So in today's tutorial, we will be using this Flutter block package which you can find in pub.dev. Go to installing and get the latest package dependency and add it in your project. In this tutorial, I have created a simple counter app that has an increment button and a decrement button. And the on tap function for both buttons is empty now, which we will create the function using block. Block is a design pattern, therefore it has its own file structure. If you look at extensions in VS Code, you can find out that there is a block extension that created by the author of blog, Felix Angelov. And this extension will definitely help to save up your time if you are experienced with block. This is because with this extension, you just have to right click and click on block and enter and it will automatically create a whole block folder structure for you. However, in today's tutorial, we will create each file one by one from scratch together with its implementation without using the extension so that you can have a better understanding on what is happening behind block. Firstly, we will be creating a block folder and in the folder, we will have three files which are block file, state file and event file. Event and state files are mainly for state and event initialization while block file is mainly for function implementation. So this is the folder structure for block. You will get the same folder structure with using the block extension. So now let's start with event file. For this counter app, we have only two events, increment and decrement. And both events don't take any parameters. So it will just be a simple counter increment and counter decrement class that extends the counter event class. If you have events that takes any parameters, you should initialize in the class. And now we have done initializing our event file. Next, we have to export this file for the use of the block file. And this event file should be available for the block file only. So we will be using the part of keyword and the destination file name. Make sure the name is the same as your block file in the block folder. And we have completely done for the event file. Next, we will be working on the state file. State file mainly initialize state variables. And in this counter app, we just have to keep track of one state which is the count value. So in our counter state class, we just have to add one integer count variable. And whenever in your class you have a parameters, you have to create the constructor and provide a default value. So here I will set the default count value as zero. Now we have to create a setter for the state class. The setter for the block state is called copy with. This setter function will take a count value and return a new counter state whenever it is executed. And this is how we initialize the state file. And if you have more than one variables in your state, you just have to add in the copy with function and the constructor. Until now, we have finished our event file and state file initialization. Now we will work on the block file. The first step in block file is to import both event file and state file that we have created. So for import in Flutter, we will use the part keyword. So there is an underlying error in importing the state file, which tells that we might forgot to export the state file. So don't forget that you should export both event and state file. Now the error is gone. 
So for counter block class, it should extend block with the counter event and counter state that we have created. And here we have to import the flutter block library. So whenever an instance of the counter block is created, it should initialize the counter state as well, which here in the super keyword, we will execute a counter state constructor. Next, we will be implementing the counter event by using the on keyword followed by the event name. So here we have added both events. Now we will add the implementation for each event. For the count increment event, we will increment the count value by one. And the reason that we wrap the state.copyWith function with emit function is because emit notify block that a state has changed. And the presentation layer should make changes or rebuild the UI according to this emit signal provided by this block instance. Now we have added implementation for both events. Until now, we have completed initialization and implementation of the block folder. Lastly, we can now add block into our presentation layer so they can communicate. Before we add block, currently this counter application reads a count integer variable that created locally and passed through the content widget to display in the text widget. And now we are using block so we don't have to create the variables locally and pass through multiple layers. We can now access to the block state or events with the block instance. So in order to use block, firstly we have to create a block provider. And this provider will create an instance of the counter block through its create function. In order to receive the state change emitted by the block event, there are a few block listener widget options to choose. And in this tutorial, I will use block builder. And this block builder widget should come after block provider widget, else you will get an error. This block builder provides a context and a state parameter. So in a text widget below that display the count value, we can access to the block state count value directly through state.count. Next, in the onTap function for the buttons, we will now execute block event. To call block event, we have to use context.read followed by the block name, dot add followed by the event name. Same goes to the increment button. So now we have added block event to both buttons and we have replaced the local count value to the state count value to be displayed by the text widget. Now let's try out in the simulator. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine, which we can increment and decrement the count value and the count value is responsive. This is how we use block in our Flutter application. Here comes to the end of the tutorial. If you have any question, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next tutorial.